earlier this week, the proposed veterinary drugs and feeds bill was warmly received by veterinary experts and farmers following its approval by cabinet. Among other things, the bill seeks to address the management and regulation of veterinary products in the country. Veterinary professionals and the whole paraprofessionals are very happy with those decisions and they, they recommit themselves to serve the country. The law we have to reg that regulates animal drugs also regulates human drugs. But the biggest challenge was that it was skewed to favor human drug regulation. And this has led to stagnation of the development of the animal drug industry and the livestock sector at large. However, pharmacists have expressed their reservations on the creation of a new regulatory body. In a letter, the Secretary of the Pharmaceutical Society of Uganda said creating a new authority would cause more problems. When you look at the nature of human and veterinary medicines is that they overlap. For example, the rapist vaccine is given both to humans and is also given to the animals itself. With two separate regulatory agencies, who is going to regulate it? Who is going to license it? Who is going to import it? What if one rejects the application to import? Will the other one approve? There is therefore a risk of double standards arising. The pharmacy have both human medicines and veterinary medicines. Now when you have two regulatory agencies coming to one facility, how is that going to work out? And when double standards arise, then there is a very big risk that quality can be compromised. Dr. O.P. also says poor regulation of antibiotic drugs used for animals can lead to a rise in antibiotic resistance in humans who consume animal products. Majority of the antibiotics used for animals are used specifically for prevention of disease and also for promotion of growth. But the antibiotics used among the patients or the humans are used for treatment of disease. Now where there is poor regulation in one authority and better regulation on the other and there is a difference, then there is a very high risk that any resistance from the animal side can be transferred to the human side and this can escalate the issue of antimicrobial resistance. We already are in a bad situation. Creating this veterinary authority might take us not just into a worse situation but a life-threatening situation. The pharmacists are now seeking audience from the line ministries and the head of state for a discussion before the proposed bill is passed. Challenges in the veterinary sector are not product related, they are practice related. So there's a need for government to be able to see how can we strengthen veterinary medical services access. This requires setting up of veterinary health facilities at every sub-county level. Secondly, there's need to put efforts on the supply chain. And then the last effort, train, train, train. Last week, Nyabushozi County MP Fred Moesije was granted leave of parliament to introduce the veterinary drugs and feeds bill as a private member's bill. Edward Muhumza, NTV.